All right, so first question, uh, the cold drawn steel bar showing the figure is subjected to a completely reversed axial load fluctuating from between 28 and minus 28 at a temperature of 500 uh, Celsius. Determine the endurance limit. So I need the endurance limit only. Uh, remember that the size factor that only takes a value other uh, only takes a value other than one for bending or torsional loading. So this is axial. It's not torsional or bending. So I already know that the size factor, which is kb, is one. And the question is the endurance limit. So I don't need to calculate any stresses or stress concentrations or anything. It's only the endurance limit. So I'm going to need SE first estimate, KA, because it's uh, cold drawn, so I can figure that out. No size factor, so 1, because it's axial, not torsional or bending. KC, um, which is for axial 0 0.85, and uh, KD, which is the temperature at uh, 500 Celsius. And then SE is going to be KA times KC times KD times SE. Uh, endurance uh, SE prime okay so SE pr uh, prime is half of the ultimate strength so 570 divided by 2 which is 285 we have pascals KA is full cold, cold drawn so the finish factor KA is uh, I'm using megapascals and is uh, cold drawn 304 and minus 217 and also I'm going to use this equation for the temperature and that's all I need from my equation sheet so Ka is equal to to go away 304 times SUT to the minus 0 0.217 is equal to 0 0.767. And for the temperature, I have these equations. So 0 0.99 plus 4.9 times 10 to the minus 4 times 500 in Celsius minus 2.1 10 to the minus 6 times 500 squared. Put that in the calculator and I get 0 0.76. Now I multiply 285, this number, this number, this number, and this number, and I get 141.2 megapascals. And again, I don't I don't care about the loading itself or the stress concentrations or anything. That only uh, helps me identify KB and KC. That's it. Next problem. For the C clamp shown, an end to the paper force, so I have a force that's going inside here, the handle, is applied at the end of the 3 8 inch diameter handle. So, right hand rule, if I follow that right hand rule, this is going to be going down, and that's important because I'm going to choose an equation where the load is being raised because it's opposite, it's in the opposite direction of the axial direction. So. When this is this is going down, there's going to be a reaction force going up. That's like raising the load. Uh, the screw is a three fourths inch six acme thread, single threaded six uh, threads per inch. The handle and the screw are made from cold drawn steel. The friction coefficients for the screw and the collar are 0.15, so there's going to be friction here at the collar. Uh, the collar has a friction diameter of one inch. It is desired that the handle yields before the screw fails. Determine the maximum clamping force if the maximum force at the handle before it yields has been found to be 4404. What would the clamping force be if the threads are lubricating? Okay, so because I have the, the maximum force before it yields, I can calculate the torque. Okay, the torque that's going in here and can be transformed. Can, the, the torque that's being in, going in the, in the screw and that can be transformed into an axial load. So that torque is equal to 4404 times this distance from here to here, 3.5. And that is 154.14 pounds inch. Now, the equation that relates the torque to the force, to the axial force here, um, 
So this torque T to the force F here. We derived it using a, a, a super simple force body diagram, uh, free body diagram for one of the threads in, in the screw. And so that equation is this one. But also they're telling me about the friction coefficient and the color diameter. So I'm gonna use these two equations together. Uh, because it's not just overcoming the friction and making the, the load uh, rise or, or go down. So what I was saying before is this is positive and this is negative because the, the force is, the load is being raised. If it was the opposite, if the torque was going in the opposite direction and I'm unscrewing the clamp, it would be negative and positive. Uh, I'm going to use this equation as it was. And uh, there is going to be uh, a friction from the color itself as well. I'm gonna use these. So basically I'm gonna use, I need to find F and DC. Those are given, both F and FC. I'm trying to find F. Um, there's, uh, I'm gonna need uh, DM alpha, which is 14.5 and L, which is the lead. Okay, so go back to this. I start writing those things that I need. Alpha, alpha is going to be, come on, alpha is going to be 14.5. Uh, the lead, I'm being told that there's six threads per inch, meaning the lead is one sink, one sixth of an inch. There's six six threads would be an inch and it's single threaded so every turn of a knot will go up one pitch which is one sixth um i need my dm so that's the pitch diameter the mean diameter so it would be the nominal diameter which is three fourths and then i'm gonna discount one fourth of a pitch to get this dimension which is the dm it would be half of p over two, so p over four, on this side and then on the other side of the screw. Okay, so one fourth here, one fourth here, one half total. So one half of one sixth, which is the pitch as well. Okay, so one twelfth, nine twelfths minus one twelve, eight twelfths, which is uh, two thirds. And then I use my equation that relates the torque to the force. So it's going to be force times the diameter over 2 times the lead plus pi friction coefficient secant of alpha over pi dm minus 0 0.15 times the lead times secant of 14.5 plus the friction of the, the, the torque friction from the collar, so the friction that occurs here, which is the other equation F times the friction of the collar, which is the same friction as the one on the threads, times the uh, diameter of the collar, the friction the diameter of the collar, uh, divided by two. Okay, I solve for F from this equation, and I get almost a thousand pound force. Okay, so that's my first answer. Now the other one is easier because there's what happens when it's lubricated. I can just model of the first this whole equation. I can just model it as T equals a constant for lubricated F and the nominal diameter, meaning F is going to be T over KD. Okay, so it's the same torque, the same 154, 14 that I had here divided by k for lubricated so right here for lubricated it would be 0 0.18 if it was zinc plated it's this value if it's cadmium plated it's this value in this case i only want the 0 0.18 and the diameter would be the nominal diameter in this case because it doesn't have any sub index here okay um, so i solve for those and i get a force of 1,142 pounds. Right. 
problem three, the shaft shown is machine from steel. The shaft rotates at 1600 RPM and it is supported in rolling bearings at A and B. The applied forces F1 and F2 are those. Uh, will the shaft achieve infinite life? So this is the question. I know I need SE, but SE was already given. So the endurance limit is already calculated. I don't need to do any of that. Yeah, but I do need to calculate the maximum stress because so it tells me use the fatigue factor of safety based on, achi of ach on achieving infinite life as your argument around diagram values why whatever those are instructions they are important so I'll always read those but just to answer the question I need to calculate a factor of safety which is the endurance limit over the maximum sigma right this was already given so that's not part of my problem I just need to find the the maximum sigma so maximum sigma here I can identify that it's a stress concentration. It's going to be way higher because even though it's not my maximum moment, it is pretty close and there's going to be a stress concentration, which will bring that up much higher than it is. So I need to figure out those stress concentration factors because they weren't given. So I have the relationship. I need the relationship between the, the notch radius, the fillet radius, and the small diameter, which would be 0 0.6 over 0. 0 0.06 over 0 0.6. 0.1 and the relationship between the diameters which would be 1.8 over 0 0.6 or 3 and I will also need a sensitivity factor that depends on the radius of the notch 0 0.06 inches and the ultimate strength which in this case is 100 given here okay I'm gonna look for those two in my equation sheet I want uh, shaft that looks like this uh, but not under torsion it's being bent by the external forces so I need this this first um, diagram and what I said is R over D is 0 0.10 so I go up until I found a D over D that is equal to 3 basically this okay so my value for KT is 1.8 and my sensitivity factor is 0 0.6 0 0.06 for the notch and I go up till I find my SUT of equal to 100 KSI. So this value would be 0 0.8. Okay, so I found those. AT is equal 1.8. Q is equal to 0 0.8. And I know that there's a the definition to the the yeah the definition of of the stress the fatigue stress concentration factor gives me this equation, gives these equations. So I'm going to use that because I have Q, Q and KT to get my KF. All right, so I go back here. KF is equal to 1 plus Q times KT minus 1. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, 0 0.64. And now my stress max would be KF times the bending stress and y over i or so we've done it a thousand times 32m over pi d cubed so 1.64 times 32 times the moment not the maximum but the one at the notch at the fillet sorry 147.5 over pi d. and then the d the diameter that i'm going to use is the smaller one because that's what's going to give me a highest um, stress so at the fillet I can either have a stress in that part on the right or on the left on the left it's with the 0 0.6 and that's going to be highest so I calculate this stress it gives me 11,407 psi now going back to the, the, the beginning I have 34,200 over 1100 11,407 and this yields uh, value of 2.997 whatever and my instruction said uh, round n to the nearest tenth so basically 3.0 okay and that would be my answer fourth one bearing reactions r1 and r2 are exerted on the shaft shown in the figure which rotates at 950 revs per minute and supports an 8k bending force has to make the factor of safety so I'm gonna need two things that I don't have SF and Sigma max 
for a life of 10 hours. The surfaces of the steel are machined. That's going to be important. Actually, it isn't because I already have the endurance limit. And the diameter is 2.757 inches. And I'm given Q. So this already hints that I'm going to need some stress concentrations. And then with the sensitivity factor Q, I can get the fatigue stress concentration factors. So I, I always said there's if I don't have either the properties SF or the stresses, I need to do both. So it's two problems. Uh, let's start with the sickness. So if I do moments about this point right here, I'm going to see 5 times 8 has to be equal. 5 times 8 has to be equal to 20 times R1. Meaning R1 is equal to 2. And that's all I need to do a shear diagram that goes up to at 8 goes down 8, basically reaching minus 6. And then it goes up 6. So I know that R2 is 6 to 2 this. And I can also draw a bending diagram. So the slope is going to be 2 times 15. This would reach a value of 30 and then go down back to 0. But I want the moment here at the stress concentration, which is 10 to the right from the beginning. So 10 times the slope 2 will give me a value of 20. And that's what I'm going to use for my stresses. So that's the first part. I can already write a nominal stress, which is equal to 32m, using m as 20, um, over pi d cubed. But there's just stress concentrations. So I need to find those. So I need kt. And for kt, I use, like I'm saying in the previous problem, r over d. So in this case, it's going to be d over 10 over d. 0 0.1 and d over d which is 1.5 over 1 okay i already have the q 0 0.9 so my kf is going to be 1 plus 0 0.9 times my kt which i'm going to find in just a second minus 1 right so with 0 0.1 and 1.5 i find my find my uh, kt so with 0 0.1 again here and 1.5, this line here, I can find my kt. The instructions say to round it to the nearest tenth. I'm going to do 1.7. This is, would be 1 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.7. And 0.7 times 0 0.9, 0 0.63, then plus 1, 1.63. Okay, so my maximum moment is kf m 32 over pi d cubed, 1.63 times 32 m, the one that I just found here, over pi, and the d, the diameter was given as 2.57 cubed. And that moment, ends up being, uh, that uh, stress ends up being 19.56 KSI. So that's the first part. I already know what my sigma A max is an alternating stress and it's a maximum of the stress concentration is. Now I need SF. So for the, in the fatigue stress, which is SF, for a specific number of cycles will be given by A n to the B, right? So just remember that that's uh, from this uh, SN diagram, SF and SN, and then you have this, this, and this, or 10 to the 6, 10 to the 3, and I'm, I'm looking somewhere over here. Uh, we can find out that we are actually between 1,000 and 1 million, uh, and we'll do, this, do that in just a second. So my N is equal to 950 revolutions per minute. And I'm being asked for a life of 10 hours. So 10 hours times 60 minutes each, each would be 600 minutes. So if I multiply those two, I have 570,000 cycles or revolutions or cycles. It's the same thing. Um, this here. Um, 
I'm gonna need A and B, but for those, I need F, which is, again, going from my SN diagram, this is F times SUT, a fraction of SUT. So I look up F, and that is gonna depend on, oh God, that is gonna depend on um, SUT. So SUT is gonna be 120 from here. So I go to my diagram. Uh, and that's gonna be 120 here. I don't know what happened. Okay, 120. My F is gonna be 0 0.82. And my equations, okay, these are all messed up. Something happened. Okay, better. Uh, so 120. Oh god. 0 0.82, and my equations for B and A are these. That again depend on F, that's why I'm, I'm finding the F. And as you see that I have, and I see that I was also given. So F is going to be 0 0.82. A is F times SUT squared over SE. And B is minus 1 third log of F SUT over SE. Uh, 36. Sorry, this was a 36 because I already have that. And these values yield uh, 269 and a minus 0 0.1456. Okay, so I have all that I need for this equation. So my str uh, fatigue strength is equal to this equation. I have all the values, and that yields a number of 39.1 ksi. So basically, my n which is the question I'm being asked, estimate the factor of safety would be SF over sigma max or 39.1 over 19.56 and that gives you a 1.9999 something that if you round to the nearest tenth uh, will give you a, a factor of safety of two. Right. And finally, a schematic of a clutch testing machine is shown. The machine steals shaft with those properties, rotates at a constant speed, and axial load is applied to the shaft and is cycled uh, from 0 to P. And the torque induced by the clutch, so when, when the clutch is moving in this direction, there's going to be some friction that causes some torque. Okay, So if P goes from 0 to P, T also goes from 0 to T, depending on that. Uh, value of, of P here. Um, the static stress concentrations, and it, this is in bold, so I'm going to need the fatigue stress concentrations and the fillet R3 and 1.8 for axial and torsional loading, respectively. Assume synchronous loads with um, the friction 0 0.3 uh, friction coefficient and find the maximum load P such that the shaft will survive a minimum of 10 to the safe cycles with a factor of safety of 3 using Goodman criterion. So the Goodman criterion is given here. So I have, what what do I have and what do I need? I, I have the factor of safety n. I was not giving the endurance limit, so that's going to be part of the problem. I was giving the ultimate strength, and I need to uh, identify what the von Mises, because of this prime, is for the alternating stress and for the mean stress. Okay, so again, a part of strength and then identifying the stresses themselves. I'm gonna go back to that. Uh, and actually I can start uh, wherever. So let's do the strength the strength first. My SE prime is gonna be SUT over two. Uh, KA, so if I have a geometry like this, so it's following machined. So if I follow the machined equation, I'm gonna get the coefficients two times SUT to the minus b 
and KB, which is the size factor, I do need to use that. So the size factor in this case is here to the left and my diameter is between uh, it's 1.2 so it's going to be this so I'm going to be using uh, this equation 1.2 so I, I use those values and I get a KB of um, 0 0.884 and then KC for loading would be a combined loading between axial and torsion. So I'm going to use one and use von Mises, which is what we usually do. If we use one for this, then we use von Mises, and of course we're going to combine both the axial and torsion. Um, and then no temperature, no KD, no reliability. I'm done. SE, I multiply all those values, and I get a 43.5 KSI. That's the first part. I'm done with the, with the properties. Now I'm going to find uh, the stresses. So this one's easy because we have, we don't have bending. It's just P over A and A is just pi D squared over 4 and the P is going from 0 to P whatever value that is so that makes the average half of that and the mean the mean half of that and the alternating stress half of that as well so 2P over pi D squared okay and the torque torsion the 16 T over pi D cubed will also depend on P if P is 0, T is 0. And if T is 0, tau is 0. Okay. And if P is P, T is T, and then tau max would be 16T over pi d cubed. So this also means, so I'm going to just replace it here, 16T, the one that was given. Uh, 16 over 4 is just a 4. From this, I also know if it goes from zero to this value, I know that the mean is the is half of that, and the alternating stress is also half of that. So two F P E D plus D over pi D cubed. Right? Now there's also a stress concentration here. So I'm gonna have to find a KF. No, I'm not done with this these two values because I'm gonna have to multiply those by a KF and a KFS. Okay? So I am giving, I am gi being given the KT for, well, basically for the for the load for the axial loading, it's going to be KT, and for the shear or the torsion, the shear caused by the torsion is KTS. So KTS is 1.8 and 3 from what I was given here, right? Um, and I need a Q and a QS. To get my KF and my KFS. Okay, so for K uh, for the Qs for the notch sensitivity, I need this radius 0 0.1 and the ultimate strength 145. So I go to my graph, um, my Q for 0 0.1 again. Uh, Wait, sorry, that's okay. 0 0.1 with a 145 KSI will be very close to 150. Okay, so basically this is going to be 0 0.9. And it's the same for the QS for this year. So very close to 150, it's going to be right here. Also 0 0.9. Okay, so 0 0.9 for both. And when I use it in the equation that I've used a thousand times already, it's going to be 2.8 and 1.78. Right? Now, with this and combining both of those, I can get my von Mises stresses. But again, if tau m and tau a are the same and sigma a and sigma m are the same, my sigma a of von Mises and my sigma m of von Mises are going to be the same, okay? And they would be equal. I would I would be using the equation of von Mises stresses. So basically this. 
Okay. Um, and that's just going to be square root of my stress concentration uh, times this, which is my sigma, to p pi d squared squared plus three times stress concentration for the shearing, which is 1.72 times the tau. F p d plus d over pi d cubed square root of that. Okay. When I input all of the numbers for all of the variables that I already have, so I don't have p, but I do have the diameter 1.2. I have the friction coefficient 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.3, the capital D6, small d, or lowercase d, 1.2. And I do the square root of that, I end up with a 2.7 p, depends on p, okay, for both the alternating and the medium stress. And I know that I'm going to use the, the Goodman um, criteria, which is just sigma A prime over SE, sigma M prime over SET, and then to the minus 1 for N, right? So from this, I have that 3, which is the, the factor of safety that I was given, is equal to 2.7P over SE, which I found here. 43,000, uh, actually I'm just leave it in K is high, and whatever value I get for P will be in kilo pound, uh, plus sigma M, which is the same value, over SUT, which is 145, and to the minus one. I solve for P, and I get 4.1, and again, that is already kilo pounds, so kips. And I'm done.